Amen. So uh, just want to get into the, into the message here this morning. And uh, so you may have noticed, man, I had this, like, this expectation this morning. Uh, we, were, we had some really awesome, I'm wearing one. Now it's a, a sweatshirt, so these are going to be available for you when we get back to church this, uh, this next Sunday, just to kind of commemorate and remember this season of, uh, of, of just, man, pressing into Jesus, pressing into the presence of God. So these, these sweaters are available. They say, give me Jesus. We've got our, our church logo on the back. And, you know, the, what, what I was reminded of is that no matter what we're going through, no matter what the circumstances, you know, we can't lose our focus on the thing that's really important. And that's, that's Jesus, Jesus Christ. He is, the, he is the one. It's give me Jesus, you know. And uh, he's really everything to us. And, and as, we, as we kind of be dug into this series, we were talking about, you know, Jesus is the foundation stone. He's the foundation of our faith. He's the foundation stone, the chief cornerstone. He is the, um, the, everything that we build our life upon. You know, when we give our lives and give our hearts to Jesus, it's not just some... Uh, you know, this is my new religious experience. It's like, man, everything that Jesus says, everything that Jesus does, I begin to reflect in my own life. You know, whenever Jesus says, blessed are those are the meek, for they will inherit the, the kingdom of heaven. And it's like, man, I, I really seek meekness in my life and, and have to press into that. Does that mean I've arrived at perfection? No. Uh, but what it does mean is that that is... Those principles and teachings are what drive the, the, my life and my decisions, and Jesus really becomes my foundation. And then secondly, we talked about Jesus being the, uh, he, he is the fullness, He's the fulfillment of the promise of God. And, you know, we see all the way back from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation, we see this promise. You see, it comes from an understanding that, that man is sinful and man has fallen away from from, from the grace of God, has fallen away from righteousness, and we are in need of a Savior. Uh, and God points that out to us when He gives us the Ten Commandments. And as we come to a realization that, you know, we have other gods before God, you know, the, the, the God Jehovah God, God creator of the heavens and the earth, and, and we can turn many things into gods. In fact, in some religions, they, they worship idols and things to that nature. So, you know, you can say that, that you know, we've, we may not have murdered someone in, in the flesh, uh, but God, Jesus says this. He says, if you've committed, uh, if you have hatred in your heart towards your brother, then you've already committed murder. You're guilty of those, of breaking that commandment. You know, we are adulterers. I mean, these are the things that Jesus uh, has, has came to save us from. The reality is, as you can see the fruit of sin throughout all of the world, and, and uh, Jesus came to save us from that. So He's the fulfillment of God's promise. God promised that He would send a Messiah. He would send a Savior. He would send one that come and restores uh, humanity back to God's grace and God's promise. And, and in that, Jesus actually gave us a promise. He said that, that, that in, in the book of Acts that, that He had to leave and go away, and He's sending another, the the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and, and then, then we would have the fullness of God dwelling within us. And we talked about that last week. And, and this week, I want to talk about, uh, you know, Jesus is, is simply says this. He says, I am, this is in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And uh, I want to talk about that verse of Scripture just to, briefly this morning and, uh, and, and realize that, that Jesus is basically saying here, the only way to finish the race, the only way to, to, to finish what God's called us to is we have to go through Him. He says this, He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No, no one comes to the Father except through Me. And I want to try to find my place in, in the book of Hebrews and just kind of tie that, this verse together and... I guess I could have had that bookmarked, but you know, you're sitting at home and don't have anything to do, and and I'm sitting here in the middle of summer with a sweatshirt on. So let me get here. Let's see. So in Hebrews, uh, if I was a youth pastor, perfectly acceptable, you know. But uh, Hebrews chapter twelve says this. It says, uh, 
It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And you have this, this picture, this image of this race that, it, that the author of Hebrews is, is talking about. And it talks about uh, Jesus being the author and finisher of the race. And I, I, I remember this time, like this one time I actually ran an official 5K. And uh, I, was, I was excited. I was happy about everything that was going on. It was like I was running this race. And it's so wonderful. And I had all kinds of people around me. And uh, I was running too fast, didn't pace myself appropriately, and I was kind of getting to this place of burnout. And right towards the end of the race, I kind of came around a turn, and I saw this finish line. I mean, it was, it was very prominent. It was like this big blow-up finish. It said finish on the top of it. And it was like in that moment, I saw the, all the people who had finished well ahead of me. And, uh, the, <laughs> so, and, and I saw they were cheering for me. They were encouraging me. I mean... They were a ways off, but I can see them. I can see the sign. And, and I was like, man, it was like a, a, a new wind came upon me. And I was just running, and I put my eyes focused on that finish line. And, um, and this is kind of what the author of Hebrews is talking about. Jesus is the author. He's the finisher of our faith. We're surrounded by this cloud of witnesses. And, uh, and we can be encouraged that that no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what the circumstances are, when we put our focus on Jesus, that He can begin to restore us and encourage us and strengthen us. And that's what our focus should be on. And, and, and we go back to John chapter 14. Jesus, he, He's saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Me. And, and I'm like, I'm remembering that race that I was in. The only way for me to finish that race was to run through that finishing sign and run past that and, and, and actually finish the race. And, you know, it's so important that in life, many times we kind of get distracted and sidetracked. When I was running, they had coffee shops and ice cream shops and, and all kinds of things there. I could have just j j uh, darted off the racetrack anytime I wanted to, but I wouldn't have finished the race. The, the value was that Jesus, that, that that finish line gave me a place to finish. And in the same way, Jesus gives us a place to finish. I remember so long ago when I was saved and I began to read these verses of Scripture, Jesus saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And I, I kind of viewed that in a negative perspective. It was like, you know, Jesus is the only way. And I would actually use that as almost ammunition against people who weren't following Jesus, people who weren't saved. And I was like, man, you can't, you can't get saved through, through Buddhism or Hindu or through, through uh, astrology or cosmos stuff and all this New Age stuff. And, you know, that's not the way. The only way is Jesus. And, you know, uh, I kind of had this view, I guess, if I can be a little bit transparent, that that Jesus was almost being like exclusive in this. Like, you know, like there was this, there was this great gap, this great void between God and man. And, and Jesus was like, he came to the earth and he eliminated every other way to the Father. And he said, the only way you can get to me is through, or get to the Father is through me. And, and I'm like, man, that, that seems kind of strange. But as I began to mature in my faith, I realized something that was really important and and it's that Jesus, it wasn't that Jesus was saying the only way to get through the Father is me and you can't get there any other way. I mean, that's, that's true, that there was this great chasm, there was this great divide between us and, and the Father. But the reality is, is that before Jesus came, there was no way. There was no finish line on that race. It was like we were just, as human beings, just keep going round and round and round and searching and searching and searching and groping and groping and, uh, and looking for somewhere to, to finish, to grab hold of. It's, it's almost like being uh, in a dark room that was, that was perfectly round with no doors. I mean, and you're trying to find an escape, and it's like there's nothing there. You're just kind of walking around in circles. 
And, and when Jesus came, he's, he says, listen, he says, I am the way. He's like, you don't have to go through your religious processes. You don't have to go through all of, all of the things and the works and all of that stuff. He says, I'm providing a way for you to come to the Father and, and to find peace and to finish that race. And although we may not be finished right now, you know, I can look and see, I mean, in, in the Spirit, I can see that there is a finish line, and I'm not, I'm not disappointed in that. I'm encouraged in that. Because I know that, man, I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. And that's encouraging for me. And it's something that I hope that we can all remember and, and grab hold on, that no matter what the circumstances, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff, they, they comfort me, you know. It's almost like in church world today, we think of thy rod and staff, they correct me. Well, I mean, that's partially true, but really the rod and staff of the Lord are there to bring comfort and peace because it gives us direction and hope. I couldn't even imagine running a race without a finish line. But I'm glad to know that through Jesus Christ, we have a finish line. Jesus says, I am the way the truth, and the life. Jesus is our finisher. He is our finish line. I, I was, uh, as I was kind of preparing and just looking at these verses and, uh, and just thinking about and just pondering on this, I came to this realization, and, and I just want to read John chapter 14 uh, and just kind of read up to that verse. It says, Jesus is, is uh, let me give a little context first. Jesus has all of his disciples. It's kind of this last uh, will and testament, this last moment that Jesus has with his disciples before he goes to the cross. And of course, he reveals to them that, hey, I have to go away. I'm going to be, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be killed and I'm going to be uh, seemingly left abandoned. And then Jesus is, is just telling them in John chapter 14, he says, but let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and some translations may say many dwelling places or, or many rooms. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, it's this idea that Jesus is saying, don't let your heart be troubled. Just keep your focus on me. If you believe me, believe the Father. He's saying that, that God gave a promise of a Messiah. He says, listen, don't give up. This, what's interesting is that whenever the disciples came to realization that Jesus was the Messiah, they had no idea that the Messiah was meant to be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. They thought in their earthly minds that the Messiah would come and he would overthrow the Roman government. He would, he would overthrow all the barbarian governments and all these other things and, and basically take over the world and, and establish his kingdom here on earth. And you see, they had no idea. This was kind of like some new information for them. This is a new idea that, that the Messiah would come to be, to be crucified and to die and, and to be a sacrifice for the sins of the world, to make a way where there seemed to be no way. And it's, it's when we put our focus on Jesus, when we follow after Him, not on our religion. Listen, I, I love the Word of God. I'm a student of the Bible. I, I love the Word. But the manifestation of the Word of God is found in the life of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. He is our hope. He is our anchor. He is our Savior. So, so we put our, our hope and, 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 and all that in the Word and we read it, but, but really it all points to Jesus. Jesus is, is really what it's all about. I, I, I was listening to a missionary share a story one time and, and he, um, he was going out into the, into the bush, into the, into, uh, the Amazon jungle, and uh, they, had to, they were going to reach this, this village that was, um, had never been reached but with the gospel before, but they had permission, they were going in, 
they were invited to go into this village, this tribe, tribal area that had never been reached before, and they, they hired a guide. And, um, and, you know, the guy, they were, they were thinking, hey, we're, they were looking on a map, and they saw that, you know, where they were, and they were looking to go where, where this tribe was. And so they hired a guide to take them to the tribe. And, and so they get there, they, they, they drive to this certain area, they get out of the car, and, you know, the guide is getting all of his pack on, he's getting everything ready, he's got his machete, and uh, he's, he's, he's ready to go take this group to the village. And um, so the, the, the missionaries, they were looking for some kind of trail. They were looking for a path. They're like, you know, where's, where's the way? How do we get there? And so they asked this guy, they're like, hey, I don't see a trail here. I don't see a path. How do we get to this tribe? And, and the guy just looked at him. He said, there is no trail. He said, I'm the trail. He said, as long as you stay behind me, I'm blazing a trail to get to where we're going as we're going there. He says, I'm the way, basically. And that's kind of how Jesus is for us. Sometimes it doesn't, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's happening around us. But when we just keep our eyes focused on Him and on what He says in His Word, what He reveals through that rhema Word of God, what, we have the Holy Spirit living in us that we can just put our full focus and trust on Jesus. Man, He is the way. We just follow after Him. Thomas is saying, but we don't know how to get there. Jesus says, don't worry about that. You just follow me and you'll get there. He says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. Don't let your heart be troubled. Man, that's just encouragement for me because I, can, I know that, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what the circumstances are, you know, I have, I have Jesus he's the author and finisher of my faith. And that's just encouragement for me. So this morning, I just want to let that be an encouragement to you and, and, and to your family that although we have so much around us that causes us to be troubled, that, that we can read these verses and say, man, you know, the, a, a cure for COVID is not the way. Jesus is the way. Uh, that, that this... This hurricane and, and all this going away is not the way. Jesus is the way. And we pray for those things, but we have to keep our mind, our attention, our focus on Him. And that'll bring us comfort. So this morning, as you're there and as we just wrap up this just little devotional time, I want to encourage you just to, if you will, right where you are, if you could just close your eyes. I just want us to put our focus on Jesus that He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. And, and, it, and it's almost like when we begin to eliminate all the distractions that we can begin to see the way out of our circumstances. And that brings great comfort and joy to, to me, and I know it will to you. So right now, just, just close your eyes right where you are. I just want us to put our focus on, on Jesus and, and to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You for Your grace and for Your mercy. I thank You, Lord, that, that You came to make a way where there was no way. Lord, we were forever and eternally separated from God. Lord, that although we tried to work and we tried to do things, Lord, that there was nothing that we can do that would save us from our guilt, from our shame, from an eternity in a devil's hell. But Jesus you came that you could make a way for us. You came that you can help us to finish our race here on earth. Lord, you are our finish line. So Lord, I pray that, that, that no matter what's going on in the lives of, of, of those who are watching online or, or those who are, are, are watching this later today, Lord, I pray that you encourage them with the knowledge that you are with them that you are running this race with them. And Father, even though we can't see you, Lord, you're still there and you're still working amongst us. Lord, I thank you for, for your grace on our lives. I thank you for, for saving us, for healing us, and for touching us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you encourage us as we go forth today and throughout this weekend. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before, you, before, you, before we just kind of close this out, I just want to give you an opportunity just to receive, you know, maybe you don't know the way. Maybe you've never received Jesus 
as, as the Savior of your life. And maybe you've, I mean, if you were like me, you've tried all kinds of things and it never really worked out. And you're searching and you're seeking and, and, and it seems as though you're lost and have nowhere to turn. I want you to know this. For one, I want you to know that you're not alone. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible uh, says, and Paul's remind us, this great theologian, it's not like the Bible was written by some random folks. The Bible was written by trained, experienced, and Holy Spirit anointed individuals that were speaking through the, through the unction of the Holy Spirit, that were speaking about through the unction of God. And, and Paul says this, he says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, if you, if you feel alone, if you feel far from God, I want you to know that you're not alone, that in fact the Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. We've all failed. Every one of us, every person, no matter how hard we've worked. Listen, outside of Jesus Christ, Mother Teresa is a sinner. All of us are. So don't feel like you're a failure. Don't feel like you're alone. Listen. We're, we're, we are all far from God because of sin. Romans 6.23 says this, that the wages of sin is death. And, and, and that's, that's a very important concept. You see, without Christ, we have no way. We're lost in the middle of the jungle with no way out, no finish line. It's like running a perpetual race. We just keep getting tireder and tireder, sorer and sorer, and there's nowhere to go. There's no finish line. You see, sin brings on death. It brings on, it's like the things that we've worked for, the things that we've earned is death. And it says here that, that the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Jesus came. He was a gift to humanity. Jesus came and gave us this gift of eternal life. How? Through His life, through Him, I am the way. When we seem lost, Jesus is the way. And it's a gift for us. All we have to do is follow Him. And when we say that, you know, well, okay, now that I know that Jesus is my Savior, I'm going to clean up my life. I'm going to, you know, as soon as I get right, then maybe Jesus would accept me. And, and the, the reality is that in, in Romans chapter 5, it says, but, but God demonstrates His own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still lost, while we were still alone, while we were still in the midst of the race, Jesus paid the price. He's not waiting for you to get your life together. He's waiting for you to surrender your life to Him. That while we were yet sinners, He died for us. He's already paid the price. All we have to do is receive it. And finally, in Romans 10, 11, it says this, whoever believes on Him will not be put to shame. And then verse 13, it says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you feel lost, if you feel alone, if you feel abandoned, listen, all we have to do today is call on the name of Jesus. Make Him the, the, the foundation of your life. Make Him the fullness of your life and accept Him as the finish of your life. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. So right now, right where you are, this is, this is what I want you to do. Just by faith, if, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ if, as your Lord and Savior, if you've never said, Father, I want to follow you. I'm tired of following everything else. I'm tired of following Instagram and social media and, and this actor or rapper or person. Or I'm tired of, of, of just following my, my own addictions and desires, but I want to follow you. I want to give my life to you. You can do that today simply by just receiving Him, calling upon the name of the Lord. So if that's you this morning, I want to encourage you. Would you just, just extend your hands to, towards, the, to, towards heaven and just say, say these words with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I need you in my life. I've made a mess of things. And I don't know where to go from here. But I believe in you. 
because I, because I believe in the Father. And I believe that you died for me. That I can have eternity with you. So right now, I surrender my life to you. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I turn from my sins. I commit to you this day that if you take my life, I'll give it to you. Every aspect. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising again to new life to give me life. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.